Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars, and you're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, you might consider subscribing because it's free. At the very least, consider giving me a thumbs up. That always helps. In this video, I'm going to invite you to kick back, relax, and watch as I make this fretboard for the Delta neck through guitar build that I'm working on right now. So let's jump in and get started. The first part I'm gonna cut is the fretboard and I'll clamp it down to my wasteboard, making sure that the center lines that I marked on the surface of the blank line up with the lines that I've engraved in the wasteboard of my CNC machine. There are multiple operations involved with making a fretboard, and the first one is going to be to cut the slots. And to do that, I'm using a 0.024 inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. I'll be cutting at 20 inches per minute with a depth of cut of 0.01 inches. The slotting process takes about 30 minutes to complete. Now I know that you can cut slots faster with a table saw and a dedicated fret slotting blade. However, you can't cut blind fret slots with a table saw. The next operation will involve drilling the holes for the front marker dots. And in this case, the marker dots are going to be an eighth of an inch in diameter. So I'm just going to do a simple CNC drilling operation using an eighth inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit to poke those holes in the appropriate places. For the dots themselves, I'm going to be using a uh, eighth inch diameter maple dowel and that will give nice contrast with the paduke and paduke is a wood that looks sort of a dark orange color and over time it will slowly turn more of a rich brown color so there should be nice contrast between the maple fret marker dots and the paduke fretboard itself i use ca glue and some accelerated to glue those dowel rod pieces into the holes for the fret marker dots and you'll notice that I'm doing the work on the wasteboard without removing the blank and I do this so that I don't have to reset up and home the machine and get everything lined up again it's already done The next cutting operation involves carving the radius, and for that I'm using a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And that's gonna be running at 150 inches per minute with a depth of cut of 0.25 inches. However, because it's only a 12 inch radius, it's just barely skimming the surface. And I'm doing a step over of 8% of the bit's diameter. That gives a really nice smooth surface that I can easily sand with 320 grit sandpaper later on. The final cutting operation for making a fretboard on a CNC machine is to cut the perimeter shape. And I'll do that with a eighth inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit with a feed rate of 80 inches per minute and a depth of cut that's equal to the diameter of the bit. And I also want to make sure that I leave tabs so that once the bit has cut all the way through the blank, the fretboard doesn't go flying off the wasteboard and either suffer damage or break the bit or become a lethal missile that could puncture my chest and kill me instantly. 
And once that operation's finished, I can liberate the fretboard from the blank by cutting the tabs with a small hacksaw blade. To go from a blank like this to a finished fretboard right off the CNC machine took about an hour, and that includes setup time and bit changes. So what I need to do now is I'm going to lightly sand the surface of the fretboard to remove some of the barely visible tool marks that the CNC machine left. And I'll probably start with like a 320 grit sandpaper and then I'll move up through the grits. Uh, I'm not sure how high I'll go. It just depends on how the surface looks as I'm working it. So let's head back out to the shop and do some sanding. To remove the tool marks that are still in the surface of the fretboard's radius, I'm gonna be using my 12 inch radius sanding beam. And this is something I made myself on my CNC machine. I cut it from a slab of half inch thick aluminum. And if you've got a, a CNC machine that's capable, you can make these things all day long for very cheap. Uh, if you don't, you can always purchase them online uh, made either from wood or aluminum. And I'll post links down in the description below if I can find some that I recommend. But I'm gonna be using 320 grit sandpaper and I'm using the 3M sticky back stuff because it's the easiest to apply. The surface that I'll be working on is a slab that I created myself with a couple of pieces of three quarter inch thick Baltic birch plywood that were glued together. And then on top of it, I glued down a section of laminated flooring. So the surface is very flat and very smooth and is ideal for this sort of work. And then I'm just gonna attach the fretboard to that surface using some double-sided sticky tape. Some guys like to use a pencil to mark the surface of the fretboard so they can gauge their progress as they're sanding. But I've generally never found that necessary to do because the minute the sandpaper starts to work the surface, I can tell the difference between what's been sanded and what hasn't. Now that depends a lot on the species of wood and the grit of sandpaper you're using. So if you're not experienced, you might want to try that pencil trick to help uh, gauge your progress. As I'm sanding, I like to stop every so often and check my progress, not only to make sure I'm removing the tool marks, but I also like to check to make sure that the fretboard is absolutely dead flat level and that I'm maintaining the radius from the nut all the way to the heel. After sanding with the 320 grit, if I want to move up in grits, I'll sand by hand because once you're past 320 grit, you're not going to change the radius of the fretboard. Okay, so the fretboard is basically finished. Now there are a couple of other processes that I need to perform on it, but those can come later. And that's gonna involve pressing in the frets. However, right now, since I'm in a CNC mode, I'd really like to move forward with making the neck. And that's gonna happen in the next episode. So be sure to uh, check back and watch that episode is I think you'll find this to be really interesting the way that I'm going to be making this neck and how it's going to look. Uh, it's, this is not your traditional neck through guitar. It's going to be kind of interesting. So uh, be sure to check in. As always, however, until then, take care, stay safe. Make sure you click that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and I'll see you or I hope to see you in the next episode.